Good day, I'm Richard Palestro, representing the Rocky Mountain Phil and Telic Library and the Rocky Mountain Stamp Show as the moderator for the presentation you will see on the thought-provoking subject of metaphors and stamp design. Our presenter is Luis Fernando Diaz. He is an FIP accredited juror for traditional philately, philatelic literature, and thematics, and a member of both the FIP Commission for Thematic Philately and the FIP Commission Against Forgeries. He is also an accredited juror for the Latin America Bonilla Lara Literature Award. He is a member of the Costa Rican Philatelic Society, the American Philatelic Society, and Spain's Royal Academy of Philately and Postal History. Among other philatelic experiences, he has designed about 12 Costa Rican stamp issues. He has been a member of the organizing committees for eight national philatelic exhibits between 1982 and 2018, and commissioner for several international exhibits. He has been on the philatelic juries of no less than 14 international exhibitions, eight Central American philatelic exhibitions, a professor of introductory and thematic philately for seven courses in Costa Rica, and a guest speaker at no less than 10 philatelic conferences. He is a doctor in education, political science, and public administration, is retired professional university editor, is a retired university professor at a graduate level in strategic management, is a United Nations expert and a project chief technical advisor. Married and the father of three children with four grandchildren, Luis Fernando has managed to maintain a variety of philatelic collections in such areas as Costa Rica, postal history, and thematic collecting of coffee, tobacco, and others. Please welcome Luis Fernando Diaz. Thank you, Rich. When, when Rich says those things, it sounds so, you are so important. No, just a philatelist. The Costa Rica Philatelic Society and the Royal Hispanic Academy of, of Philately and Postal History always support me when I do things like this and consent me doing odd things, as Rich said yesterday, odd things. Metaphors is an odd name. I'm always trying to find what things like this could, could mean and could help. If we are talking about postal history, we immediately pose the question, uh, what, what do metaphors have to do with these things we have here? These are postal history items you have no doubt about. You treat them as postal history things. Do they have something to do with the name metaphors? If, if you are asked uh, about what do these things represent, where are those stamps from, we all know they come from Great Britain. But we all know because we see the image of this lady or another similar lady. And that lady is in there instead of the name of Great Britain. We don't need the name of Great Britain. Well, that's a metaphor. And when dealing with things like this, we use that concept in an intuitive form. We, we learn how to use it from the very beginning as philatelists without having to ask the question again about what the metaphor is. Well, it is not always that easy. In here, then, I make a brief of, of what are the relations between stamps and design. And what I say is that exhibiting is always a sort of design exercise. When we prepare our presentations, the one we are going to exhibit here in the show, or whatever we prepare to be shown, 
what we do is, first of all, using stamps as design objects, but also design the form in which we are going to show it. That is called in the FIP rules as treatment. We make a plan, uh, but this plan is always a sort of design plan. We put a heading, we put the, a certain arrangement of items there, which means we are doing a sort of object of design, a small art object. We design stamps. Stamps are objects of design. Post offices usually have professional designers to design their stamps. The second one is that this is being done more and more in universities. People is being prepared in this field to do this, to do professional design as professional designers. Sometimes ago, we use without formal preparation for this. This is a stamp I designed. And what did I knew when I designed that very rare and awful thing? Now, you can get closer to that and see what is in there and say, well, this man was a little bit of crazy designing that. And some people, Alvaro, can say that in Costa Rica when we designed that. And the history, as people like Elizabeth von Janota Foski, who created a sort of a small school of knowledge regarding this, and she began to talk maybe about 30 years ago in Germany about an idea we didn't realize anywhere else, which is stamps and other things as objects of a small format design. This is the work of Elizabeth Janota. Some of the things she designed, stamps like this. She was interviewed by, by a very famous magazine, which is Scala, in the 1980s. And in there, she said this, a stamp is a mini poster, and a mini poster is a telegram. What she was saying is how a stamp carries a lot of message, a huge message. Stamp is a mini poster and a poster is a telegram. She was probably more lucky than that, more of us because she lived doing these things from about 80 years. 30 of, of those, she lived till, till 100 years. She was 70. Her death, she produced about 50 stamp design. Following what she said, to say more with fewer words, that's a metaphor. Metaphors, as she said, as mini posters. Not a poster, but a mini, mini poster. Now, in the stamp design, we find that these metaphors have two different fields in which we could analyze it. The first one is the descriptive role. If you remember the image of the queen, in a descriptive way, we find it in the design, and we follow using a descriptive rationale. But on a prescriptive rationale, it could be very, very helpful for stamp designers to think in metaphors, because that will always help to reach better design. There is no way, if we think metaphorically, our stamp designs will be much better than if we only think in a descriptive way without following a descriptive rationale. Now, metaphors as instruments for design. We can see it from a general way as we were seeing in the previous image, but we can get into that analyzing the different words. And then metaphor, is a composed of design, meaning, and message. And this, this is a sort of a small synthesis of what I've been saying. This is another synthesis. In the prescriptive, to create, to study sketches, to assess essential choices, to make politicians involved in the stamp decision, to make their decisions in design and in printing, and in the descriptive way, to study, to understand the stamps, 
to compose collections centered on the motif. Sometimes we think thematics as a second class collection. We don't do that frequently anymore. But we are still, we collectors of traditional and postal history sometimes put thematics as our second subject, as our second interest. But when we do things like what I'm saying here regarding the metaphors and thinking on collections centered on the motif, we are doing it a second step further to study sketches, proposals, to study varieties in design and printing, and to enrich treatment in traditional and postal history. Now, what follows is a sort of exercise and begins with Australia. In here, you see metaphors. In here, there are metaphors. In here, there are metaphors. And now I ask you, how many metaphors are there in here? How many metaphors are there in here? The Australian colleague, what does this mean for not Australians? What does this mean for all of us? We see a kangaroo, what, what comes to our mind? Australia. So the kangaroo is a metaphor of Australia. Now, is this a metaphor in that way? Sure. Is this a metaphor in that way? Sure, it is a metaphor. But the second question, are these two metaphors different? No. They are exactly the same metaphor. Remember the queen. The queen, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if, if she was young or uh, the old lady. It doesn't matter if it was Victoria or Elizabeth. It's the queen. It's the same metaphor. And in here, what we got is the same metaphor. This is the arms from Bolivia in the 1880s. In here, in the arms of Bolivia, you see some metaphors, isn't it? Same we think the kangaroo in, in Australia. Regarding Bolivia, Henry, what, what do we see the first in here? Lama Walpaca. Lama Walpaca is an image that easily represents either Bolivia, maybe Chile, northern Chile, sure Peru. But what is in here? Above the, 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 the llama. What is this? A pyramid? No. A volcano? No. The Potosi is an image of, that represents Bolivia. No doubt about it. But look at what is in here. A bird. Not, a, not any bird. What bear? The condor. Now, then Bolivia represents itself through images. Metaphors, and these metaphors, the condo, the potosi, the alpaca, are repeated and repeatedly used in, in different pieces of postal tile, but they are there, the condor in here, the potosi in here, and I don't see the, the, the alpaca. Now we can follow a new review. In this case, what I'm trying to do is to make a review of the concept and the use. First, a definition. Metaphor as an instrument of critical thinking. This was written by a North American thinker in the field of education, Ernst House. He's, he's a very well-known person. Uh, he's, uh, and what he said about this is an instrument of critical thinking. You see, it's a little bit more than when we were. We were in the kangaroo's field, which is a very local, a very rational, a very immediate field. It's here. That what this gentleman is saying is, with using metaphors, we got rational, critical thinking. And we developed that and we went in the field of education developing how to use metaphors in education, how to use metaphors in producing books and multimedia for students. 
And we use actively those metaphors when producing books for our universities. We use it in stamps as a design instrument. We use it in multimedia as an instrument for navigation. We all have learned these new languages that we were taught by developers of Word and PowerPoint and all of these things we use in, in, in computing. Look at, at this, an F. An F over a blue paint. What's it? Facebook? A small bird. What does that small bird mean? Twitter. Do you need to repeat the word Twitter or Facebook? No, the F is Facebook. The small bird is Twitter. Those are metaphors. It's draining cats and dogs. It's a literature figure, but it's a metaphor. But that's what all it was. The metaphors we use, we learn about them in, lit in literature, but not in the stamp design. Now, look at the advantages. If we use them in the stamp design or preparing exhibits or criticizing exhibits, what are the advantages we got? Economy of representation. We don't think again about what means Facebook. We use the F to get in. Economy of representation. Plausibility, credible, appearance of truth. We see the Twitter and say, oh, look, a new message. Communication of feelings, thoughts, and experiences. Maybe you remember Jonathan Swift. When he wrote about these things, what he said is, you don't need to say all the words. If you want to say this, the word chair, show the chair. So Swift, doing the inverse of the metaphors, he was using objects to show the meaning of the words. You need to say the, the word chair, put the chair. You need to say the word computer. Put the computer. This is the contrary of it. Communication of feelings, thoughts, and experiences. We use our minds to produce these things, but we can use metaphors to do it more economically, more rapid, more understandable. Enrich the interpretation process, creating empathy and complicity. A lot of times when we see the same image and we share feelings regarding that, it, it, the kangaroo in Australia. I live in Papua New Guinea and work in Papua New Guinea for about three years. And I used to go to Canberra to visit. So I went to Australia and I shared some complicity with the kangaroo. Make more vivid ordinary language. So it's sort of empathy and complicity. You develop this relationship. At the end, says Mr. House, our philosopher, education, educational philosopher, the sign of a genius. Now, it goes even further. As it reiterates the message, it produces learning. You all know that the memory and the learning process work using all of our instruments to capture the knowledge. The sounds, what we see, what we read, what we hear. And if we are learning new words, let's say metaphor, we see it written metaphor, we hear metaphor, we see the word metaphor, we are never going to forget that word. And using metaphors produces the same thing. It reinforces the learning, communicates with other languages. Sometimes we don't need to say anything else that's showing the metaphor. And if it is a mini poster, stamp is going to say a lot for all of us. Generates iconic families. In computers, we have it with Windows language. But more than that, it goes into heuristics helps in producing new meanings for the same images and new associated meanings to
to previous meanings. It helped us going into new fields of thought. I, I've been showing how this works. Move from the known to the unknown, says House. In here, I got two stamps. Now, what is the metaphor in here? Remember, we have to move a little bit into what it represents as a mini poster. It's not a cross. How many crosses? A bunch. When you see a lot of crosses in a field, what is it? Cemetery. This is a cemetery. And now, what do we have here? What is the metaphor in there? They are refugees. But what is the metaphor? They're moving. Is, is there anything else moving in there? The wind. That is the great metaphor in here. The people are facing and moving against the wind. In that specific sense, they are moving against what is oppressing them or stopping them. Now, the economy of design. To use this to represent a cemetery is in a very economic way. It's not as successful as representing Christianity because Christianity is a very complex concept. But cemetery is a very concrete concept that can be represented by a group of crosses and the wind as adversary. It's economic representation, it's symbolic representation. Now, look at what happens. 1956, the first one, in commemoration of the fallen and to promote the Society of the Care of Cemeteries Award. And now, 1969, 14 years after, Commission of the Cemeteries Award. Now, let's look at the second one, 1955, 10 years of expatriation, mostly from Eastern Europe, coming back into Germany. After 10 years, then 20 years of expatriation. But the same design. In here, what you got in both cases is that when a design proven to be successful, you use it again. A good metaphor in this field, in the stamp design, is a good metaphor if it is silent, if it says all of what needs to say without a word. What is this? Archaeological objects. They were done by early population there, I don't know how many years ago, a thousand years ago. And look at the size of the balls. What I'm going to show now, I, I will try not to talk while I'm showing you the following maybe six or eight screens. You got another analysis of this. The, the stone sphere, what it represents? The earth, the world, the planet. And then we got the route from Spain into America and Columbus ship or a representation of the Columbus ship. Now, you got the one I mentioned mine of about, I don't know, 25 years ago or something like that. This is a human rights the stamp, and what you see there in the stamp is the same you see in the cachet. The thing you see there in the stamp is, is an egg. What does an egg and human rights have in common? This is the usage of some metaphors in there. This one is an important one because this is a metaphor in a cancellation. And this one, the hands in stamps used to represent a house. Thank you. I would like to thank Luis for his masterful discussion of metaphors 
that are found on many worldwide stamps. He invites you to contact him for further information about any of his collecting interests via his email address. On behalf of the Rocky Mountain Philatelic Library, I'd like to thank you for having taken the time to visit with us on this video. You'll find that this is one of a number of videos that we've produced over the years in a, the effort to provide educational services to the stamp collecting public. The Rocky Mountain Philatelic Library is located in Denver, Colorado at 2038 South Pontiac Way. Our hours are 10 to 4, five days a week, with one day of extended hours. The library offers collectors of every kind and to the general public a host of materials that are related to stamp collecting and world history. There are over 60,000 journals contained in 800 specific journals. We have a map room, we have special collections devoted to individual countries, and we have special libraries that are devoted to individual countries. For further information about the Rocky Mountain Philatelic Library, we invite you to visit the library or visit us online at our website.